You know, I know it was only one game yesterday, and it was early, but how important was it to, to come home from that first trip and have, have a long game like that? Uh, some games feel bigger. I mean, they're not, um, but I think emotionally sometimes do. You know, it's, it's no secret. Travel days, you know, seem a little bit more fun when you won. I think that's just stating the obvious. Um, there's some games at the end of a road trip that seem, seem like swing games, but when it's all said and done, it doesn't make the biggest difference in the world unless you allow it to. I mean, it's, it's one of the things we have to fight is when you're playing great, you know, it's easy to come to the ballpark. When you're not playing, it's great. You don't want guys coming in dragging their tails or, you know. So, but that's one of the things you kind of fight. That's why we try to always be upbeat because we don't want so many ups and downs. How much have you looked forward to this day managing in Cleveland a potential return game? You know what? I, I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, it's going to be a really special day. We get so busy with what we're doing, you don't really allow yourself to think like that. I mean, in spring training, you're taking care of spring training, and then you go to Toronto, and then you go to Tampa, and I mean, we got home at 9 o'clock last night, and you unpack a bag, you wake up this morning, you're ready for the Yankees. So there's, you know, and again, that's part of why you want to be prepared so you can enjoy the pregame stuff. But because there's always a game to be played, and we can never lose sight of that because that's why we're here. Well, and again, it'll be really cool, but we've been so busy. It's not like I've just been sitting in Tampa thinking, you know, I can't wait to get through Tampa. So I can, you know, I mean, it's like we have a job to do, and you normally you get in your routines and you do it. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't really. I mean, this will be really cool for me. Um, just that he's coming. I mean, again, we wouldn't have that conversation. You know what I mean, like that wouldn't he. No, he doesn't tell me how to manage. Just he just it's not like I'm not sure how to really he just I don't think he'd be ever be gushing over throwing you know what I mean? He's thrown a baseball a million times in his life. He'll be really honored and he'll be excited, but it wouldn't be something he'd talk about. Do you talk much baseball with him? No. Uh, I mean not strategy. I mean baseball's been our whole life. But he was never my coach, ever. And I think he knew that I was always paying attention. But no, he's never once, you know, like, why do you know? And I think he's smart enough to know the game's changing, and, you know, like, you know, which it is. But I've always appreciated that, too. Coach, did how did managing in that Red Sox Yankees rivalry for all those years change you as a manager? Made me older. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, you know, um, you know, the biggest, I think one of the, one of the things I learned through that experience was that each game means one game. You know, the, you, you can find out that the fans, the media, even, you know, people with the ball club, you can lose sight of the fact that when you win, you only get credit for one win. It doesn't, you know, you want people expect you to use your closer every game and never give guys days off, and it doesn't work. So, so as a manager, you have to treat it like every other game, and that's not always the easiest thing to do. Oh, it's not hard. If you don't, you're going to have to go get another job. I mean, or somebody, everybody else will pass you by. I mean, there's a reason we do this, because we like competing. And it's, it's fun. I mean, it's fun trying to be better than the other people. That's part of why we do it. It's not hard. When that day comes, I'll, if it, I can't see it coming. I think my body will give out first. But I'll do, I would do something else. That would be a good read. And the reason it's, it's legit, it's consistent, you know, it's not just every once a week or you can't pull it off. That's how he is. I mean, to the point, I give you an example, in spring training games, on the days like we'd travel and he wasn't there, I, it was noticeable. Like, 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 damn, the dugouts, you know, it should be the other way around. Like the young kids are playing and there's more exuberance. It was like, well, here's the veteran guy that is like, it carries it's it's amazing. I, I love it. It's it's very welcome. Uh, he's and again, it's the biggest thing is because it's sincere and he's consistent. Coach, you've won so many games, like uh, hundred so games against the Yankees over the years. Does this team look strikingly different 
Well, they're a little beat up right now. And again, I totally honest, I hope they stay beat up until Friday. You know, it's, but I mean, they're just, they got some injuries. Um, you know, and they're, that doesn't mean, you know, again, you, the, the game we play, you, you, you play today and, you know, if Corota pitches a great, you know, th there's so many variables that go into it, but I'm sure they're trying to get healthy. You know, that's part of, you know, some of their veteran guys that aren't healthy are a big part of what they do. You know, in the meantime, you know, it, it's, it's really weird. Like, sometimes you don't miss guys depending on who fills in and how they do. You know, guy, you know, for short spurts, guys can pick up the slack. It's when you lose guys for lengthy periods, that's when it can make a dent. He actually looks really good. Again, I hope he doesn't, but he does look really good. Is there some history with you and Abby that, that that accusation came out? Of throwing at uh, Longoria? Well, you didn't read the accusation very well, did you? Did you read it? Uh, apparently not. He didn't, he didn't accuse me of anything. So you, that, don't, do, don't do that, okay? Thanks. Sir, what's the latest on Monson? How are you feeling? He's doing better. He's doing okay. Um, he's, he looks a lot, uh, he's, his neck is stiff, but he's moving around a lot better. And along those lines, Scott Casimir went out and threw 75 feet and about 30 throws, and we'll build up that throwing program and we, in the next like, day or so. Was, was that collision, it seemed like a solid baseball play, a clean baseball play, um, but there's been a lot of emphasis about head injury and all. Should, should that home plate collision be eliminated? Is there any reason? I don't know how you do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand the point. I mean, I'm all for nobody ever having a head injury. I just think that when when it's been said, it hasn't been thought through enough. Um, if you put a if you say that, no collisions, you're putting a you're putting a lot of base runners in a horrible position, because catchers on instinct, sometimes not just instinct, but the ball is going to take them to the plate. What's a base runner do? I mean, it's just I just think you need to think it through. If you don't want to have a collision, instruct your catcher to move. That's really easy, but you can't make a rule. You know, the rule is the catcher can't block a plate until he has the ball. For the very most part, that's when you see guys get hit. They're the gritty guys, I'm giving it, but, but they try to block the plate before they have the ball, and then there's a bobble or they get it late and they can't brace themselves. That's where you see the problems. And again, part of it's, just, it's, it's the game. I don't think you can... Again, I agree, it'd be great if nobody ever has a head injury, but if that's how you feel as an organization, just instruct your guys to not do it.